I'm broadcasting now. Let's see how many people start joining. We'll wait a couple of minutes for people to join. Hello, Marcus. Uh, you are at the right place. Uh, this is this will be a webinar for uh, mem member pass or about member pass. Welcome everyone. This will be a webinar about member pass uh, uh, delivered by See You Later. Uh, we'll just start in a couple of minutes. We will be starting shortly. Uh, I will just uh, share my screen and uh, we will be going through the um, uh, house, uh, housekeeping rules and then afterwards uh, we will hear a presentation uh, delivered by Julie Esser from, uh, uh, from uh, CU Ledger. Let me just find the presentation and mute my notifications. I apologize for that. Okay, here we go. Welcome everyone. This is Marta Gira Pikarska. I'm Director of Ecosystem for Hyperledger. As you probably know, we are running a Hyperledger member webinar series and today I have a pleasure of uh, hosting a webinar delivered by Julie Esser, who is the CEO of uh, CU Ledger. And Julie will talk about their very interesting project called Member Pass. Before we start, just let me go through the housekeeping rules. First and foremost, please remember that this meeting is held under antitrust policy uh, within the Linux Foundation. If you'd like to read the whole policy, please go use the QR code. Basically, do not share anything that is subject to some kind of IP publicly on this call. Also, I can reassure you this slide, this uh, presentation is being recorded and you will be able to watch it later as well as download the slides. Uh, Julie asked to uh, have the questions towards the end, but submit them as you sp as she talks and we'll go through your questions afterwards. If you'd like to speak up rather than write, uh, use the raise hand um, function and I will unmute you. Uh, additionally, you can use the Q&A box uh, in the bottom uh, panel 
uh, that's where the questions should go. If you want to chat with us, use the chat function. And with that, Julie, over to you. Thank you, Marta. Good, good morning, good afternoon, good day, wherever you might be. Um, Marta, if I can take over the screen share, yep. there we go. Here we are. Uh, can you see my screen okay? Yes. Thank you all for uh, attending today's webinar on Never Pass. I'm excited to share with you the Never Pass story. Just a point of clarification in Marta's result, uh, an opening introduction. Um, I'm not the chief executive officer for CU Ledger. John Ainsworth is that um, individual for the organization. Um, I'm specifically uh, senior vice president of marketing communications and responsible for all the marketing communications, learning events, um, uh, sales support activities within the organization. Um, I have a full um, agenda for you today uh, for the next hour. I, I do want to share a little bit about um, CU Ledger and the journey that we've been on for the last four years relating to Member Pass. Um, kind of talk a little bit about Member Pass itself and the problems that we're trying to solve for the credit union industry. Um, I'll take you through some um, user experience um, screens and videos so you can actually see how Member Pass works for not only the credit union, but also for the member itself. Um, and then we'll uh, wrap up with some questions. So let's get started. So this is a, a journey map of where CU Ledger has gone in over the last four years now. So CU Ledger began in early 2016 as a research action project. Um, in the United States. And um, this research action project started with a, um, a state association, trade association that serves credit unions in three states. Came up with this idea about the time that cryptocurrency started getting some buzz in the marketplace. But the cryptocurrency application was not what the industry was looking to uh, research. It was more the underlying technology that supported that application and um, what it could, the promise that it could deliver on security and privacy um, 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 benefits that could have an impact on the credit union industry. And so this was probably the smallest research action project that I think was ever funded in blockchain at that point uh, with just $650,000. And what resulted in that was a working proof of concept around utilizing a decentralized identity in the call center environment. And so um, credit unions are very much like other financial institutions that have many deliveries of services through across many different channels. And I'll talk to that um, in a little bit. The success of that working proof of concept led to the formation of CU Ledger as an organization. Uh, we completed a series re, uh, A round of financing at the end of 2017. Uh, we have now um, 27, I have listed on the slide here, but we actually have 28 investors. And actually we have over, we have 70 credit unions that have invested um, in C Ledger at this point in time. In 2019, we spent a lot of time in um, testing the user experience of what was called then my CUID for a decentralized identity project. And we worked with three credit unions on different pilots. And um, you know, the, the technology itself was already proven in the in the research action phase. And so we really want to spend a lot of time in understanding what the experience is from the consumer member perspective, what it would what, how it would work, how, it would, how they would enroll, um, how it would function, that kind of thing. Um, because credit unions are financial institutions, we also have some uh, transaction processing system integrations that are required so that it made the usability a lot easier from the employee standpoint. And you'll see some of that in our demo um, in a few minutes. In 2020 was our breakout year. Uh, we did a rebranding of my CUID to member pass. And that was uh, as a result of some research, some early research that we did among consumers and they really didn't understand my CUID and what it represented. They wanted to call it my QID, which is totally not what we expected. We wanted to call it my CU 
saving for credit union ID. Uh, but they didn't appreciate that as much as, as we all thought they would. So uh, we made the transition to member pass um, and we became uh, commercially available for credit unions to offer. And that happened in early March of this year. Um, so we've done a lot in the, in the short time, um, uh, eight months that we've been commercially available. And I have some of those results to share with you as well. We are undergoing a corporate rebranding. And so we've kind of completed our first three years of our initial business plan for the organization at CU Ledger. A lot has changed in the organization from a standpoint of what we originally set out to do and where we are today. And so um, we'll be announcing some corporate branding in early December. Uh, you can watch out for that. Um, and we're also starting our Series B round of investments here this month. This is the industry that we serve. We, we serve the credit union financial cooperative industry. This is a snapshot of what that looks like worldwide. There are over 86,000 credit unions and in some parts of the country, they're not called credit unions. They might be called financial cooperatives. Um, there are 18, 118 different companies and the, the most important number that is they serve over 291 billion members. In the US, and that's where our focus is at the moment, there are 5,200 um, credit unions, and that represents about 123 billion um, memberships. So from an organization standpoint, you know, if you look at um, what, what we're trying to accomplish as the CU Ledger organizations, there are three distinct components within any type of financial transaction, right? You need to know who you're interacting with. So you need to understand the identity of the consumer that you're interacting with. You need to document that transaction. And then there is some sort of exchange of value that is associated with that. And what CU Ledger is, is developing and delivering is a peer-to-peer -peer service network to enable verifiable, secure, and legitimate financial transactions. So in the area of understanding who you're interacting with, this is where member pass falls um, in the digital credential um, area. In terms of you need to document that transaction, we're looking at trusted information in terms of that exchange. What does that information look like? How can we leverage smart contracts in this perspective? And then of course, digital value, that could be anything. It could be financial. Um, it could be the exchange of loyalty uh, rewards and points. It could be settlement. It could be a lot of different things. And so right now we're very focused on the digital credential space because that's where everything starts, right? You cannot do anything else in that transaction without clearly understanding who you're interacting with. And so that's why the, the emphasis uh, for CU Ledger has been member pass. And in particular, this is the credit union identity identification problem. And this was a slide that was taken by um, or developed by one of our pilot credit unions. And they did a risk assessment of authentication across every one of their channels. <clears throat> and they took a look at that, um, whether they're an existing member consumer or a prospective um, consumer that wants to be part of the credit union or have an account at the credit union. Um, these are just the top channels. Of course, they're going to have a lot more channels that they interact with. But the bottom line, the, the result of their research found the same thing, is that they had a separate authentication process or method in every single channel that they interacted with their members. And when you have verification that's in, this inconsistent across channels, it's going to open yourself up for more risk. And the fraudster is going to find the weakest link in order to commit fraud. And so that's the challenge is that there is inconsistent member experience and um, the, the amount of fraud that is starting to occur in those respective channels has been increasing. And now you add COVID to the mix, right? And these are just some of the questions that we ask credit unions that I'm sure that they're asking themselves in their team meetings is how are we gonna handle this? So overnight, the credit unions, just like many other financial institutions, went digital overnight. So everything related to their digital transformation plan just went on with a, with a um, uh, click of the switch. 
and every everything every interactive action that their members had changed. Um, it moved uh, a lot of volume of their branches closed, all of their branches closed, uh, which means that a lot of their volume accelerated in their call center um, to 100% more, more calls per day than they normally had ever received before. It pushed their members towards more digital channels if they had their digital channels available, right? And so uh, with that, of course, the call center volume in particular, it, that skyrocketed, they created a lot of challenge, a lot of lot more friction in that process because now call times uh, were longer, old times were longer. And in some cases, we heard that some calls, unfortunately, didn't even get answered at all um, just because of the sheer volume and uh, the staff to support that. Now, as credit unions are starting to open up their branches again, uh, the whole identity problem um, becomes a little bit more complicated, right? Because now we're dealing with individuals that are wearing masks on their face. And as they're entering into the branches, um, you know, with half their face cover, it's more difficult than ever to try to, to reconcile a, 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 a face with an identity document, right? Um, even in the call in the drive up lanes in particular, um, we've heard a lot of horror stories of what's been happening. We've heard horror stories of individuals coming into the branches with full Halloween masks on, like chicken face. And in some states, you cannot tell an individual to take their masks off. Uh, we have instances where um, credit unions are verifying their members' identity in the vestibule. You know, so there's like a section in between the front door and where the main lobby is and they're doing verification checks. And during that time, they're asking their members to pull down their masks to verify themselves. And they're very uneasy about that. I mean, it's, you know, the, the public fear for, for health and safety is at an all time high. It's making them very, very uncomfortable. In the drive up lanes, uh, we're, we're seeing that some of the fraudsters are using the furthest drive up lane to commit fraud because the distance and the mask is making it even more complicated to verify one's identity. So is this the new norm? Is this of what we're gonna expect? Um, and certainly there are gonna be some changes that's gonna impact how uh, credit unions serve their members long-term, no doubt about it. Um, and, and it's only created a more heightened awareness about the need for a digital identity. All right. <clears throat> so all of this, um, um, friction in the identification um, process or method is leading to um, a lot of consumer frustration. I, I think consumer frustration overall is at a all time high. Um, I think we've all felt the stress, not only uh, about you know dealing with COVID in our respective countries and things. Um, and in the US, you add the political atmosphere and I'm sure that many other countries have um, political issues that you're dealing with as well. But from a consumer perspective on privacy and control, it is at an all time high. Uh, the stat that 87% of consumers that data privacy is a human right, that came from a study from KPMG recently. And uh, when I take a look at these numbers um, now compared to before 2020, uh, there's a 10% increase in, in these statistics. It's at an all time high and consumers are just Fed up. They need more control, and this is this is why we have Member Pass. Member Pass for credit unions is the simplest, most secure way for credit unions to verify their members across all of their channels. This provides them a seamless opportunity um, to interact with their members across all of their touch points. And of course, um, leveraging Hyperledger Indy has the benefits of what is what I like to term, and a lot of others, and I'm sure you might as well, like to term as cryptographic superpowers, right? The combination of cryptography, biometrics, and distributed ledger technology is really what sets member packs and other SSI products on Hyperledger Indy uh, apart from anything else in the marketplace. From a um, credit union perspective and how they're leveraging member pass. Um, on the left-hand side, I'm sure you've seen this before, um, the trust triangle 
um, the issuer, holder, and verifier. Um, I've just inserted in here um, the credit union as the issuer of the member pass credentials. The member is the holder of those credentials and stores their credentials inside their member pass app that's available in the Google Play and the Apple stores. And of course, the verifier in this example is actually the credit union. Credit union is acting as not only the verifier, but also the issuer. And so the members are able to use their member pass to verify themselves, whether they walk into the branch, they go into the drive up lane, they call into the call center, um, they're using video banking, and that's becoming more and more popular because of the pandemic. They're logging into their mobile banking or online banking accounts, or actually they're using them at the ATMs. We're working on all these different use cases, and, and there are a lot more too. Um, COVID has accelerated the, um, the, the opportunity to not only use member pass for consumers, but also leveraging member pass for employees. And so as more employees start working remotely or started to work remotely, um, they have to gain critical ac access to systems in order to serve their members. And so how do you know that that individual is the right individual accessing that account information? And so how can member pass be used in an employee um, environment uh, for access control and things of that nature? What Member Pass also does is create this omni-channel experience. Omni-channel is a kind of the latest buzzword of financial, you know, financial services. Um, but this is where the member controls that experience. And Member Pass is the, the conduit, it's the foundation that enables the member, the omni-channel experience for the consumer because they can authenticate themselves in one simple and seamless way no matter how they interact with their members. You know, these are traditional channels that you see today, uh, but they're gonna be a lot more in the future. And so regardless of uh, products and services that credit unions can add today uh, or add today or tomorrow, they'll have a consistent way of authenticating uh, with their members to access the services. And that is really the, 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 the most important thing here is that consistency. Um, and provides the single source of truth in that process. And then we look at um, how member pass can be used outside of the ecosystem. And these are just a few examples that we're working on in terms of creating additional value of the member pass um, brand, the app member pass service. And so adding more credentials uh, that consumers can have access to inside their member pass wallet and integrating with different partners that can provide value um, to their own customers with Member Pass, leveraging Member Pass as their authentication tool for their respective services. So there's a lot of opportunities here. All of these things are ones that we are, are very focused on and are active in development with. And we'll be making some announcements um, after the first of the year. Um, remote online notary, as an example in the States has become very popular because again of COVID, branches are being closed. And so how do you, uh, how, can, how can you provide notary services? Consumers still need that, that critical service. Um, and so that will be another, a key area that we'll be focusing on. And many states in the US are also accepting um, digital notary services as an acceptable means of notarizing individuals. Um, the call center in particular is one area um, that we started our, um, our pilots and our implementations, our deployments, simply because the, the current way that we authenticate in the call center is broken. I'm sure if you've all experienced that yourselves in your own situations, you know that when you call in, you're usually met with uh, a bunch of knowledge-based questions, right? That answers are all now all over the place on social media and on the internet. And it's very difficult to uh, secure the authentication process that way because you're not dealing face to face. And um, what we, what some of the results that we anticipate, we haven't been able to validate at this early stage of our juncture. Uh, we anticipate um, that we are able to to see a lot of these results for the credit union. We have been able to validate that we are taking a a, a call center authentication. Uh, from anywhere from 90 to more than three minutes, uh, typically, 
to 15 seconds or less. That we know uh, is very strong and very consistent. And we can, we, we've been measuring that all along. The result of that, and this is, um, this is data uh, for a credit union that has um, 130 um, call center representatives in their call center. So a large uh, credit union, large financial institution. Um, we could, could repurpose five FTEs as a result of that. Um, so add capacity or reduce staff or you know, move individuals from one area to another that's needed um, as a result of that. Fraud, of course, is a, another attribute of results. Um, we anticipate in using some in industry averages that we could save credit unions nearly $150,000 a year in fraud just in the call center alone. You know, this is not looking at any other channels. And the payback of their investment can be made in less than a year. And this has been very consistent. We have, and we've developed ROI models that we share with the credit unions that they can plug in their own numbers to see what kind of ROI results they can achieve. And again, we have to emphasize, this is just one channel. Um, so this is not um, the result that they can see in their branch, their lobby, uh, experiences, their mobile banking and online banking experiences. This is just one channel can pay for a number pass in and of itself. Uh, we've had some uh, additional deployments in outside of just a single use channel. Um, Unified Financial Credit Union in California uh, expanded their member pass deployment outside of the call center into the branches. And um, the results have exceeded everybody's expectations. And so they went in with a goal in July of having uh, 5,000 consumer member enrollments. Um, that, is their, that was their goal to achieve at the end of um, October. And um, actually, end of September, excuse me. And in five weeks, in five short weeks, they exceeded that goal and they more than doubled their enrollments. But the exciting part of that, in five weeks, they showed that there was usage of the member pass credentials. So for over 40% post-enrollment authentications, uh, that's huge. And not only that, of those authentications, 22% uh, of those were cross-channel, meaning they used their member pass credentials not only in the call center, but also in the branch as well. Um, and this was done um, very systematically in terms of how they reached out to the membership and how they trained their staff. They did a very proactive approach in training their staff and didn't do any mass promotion of member pass at all to their membership. And they have over, well over 100,000 members. Um, and this approach went very, very well um, in that it gave their, their staff and their tellers an opportunity to share um, some information, some good news um, uh, of a service that they can offer to their membership at a time when they need it the most. And the feedback has been very positive, very high energy. And most importantly, from the consumer side, they feel at ease. Um, there's some peace of mind that, that happens that has been established as a result of Never Pass. And many of them want to share this with their family and their friends. I want to quickly share with you now a short video um, that was created by one of our credit unions uh, um, to promote member pass to their members. At Desert Financial, we understand that when life is busy, every minute counts. Member pass is a quick and safe way to identify yourself when calling Desert Financial instead of answering the standard personal identity questions. Member pass uses a secure mobile app to quickly verify your identity using your face, fingerprint, or six-digit PIN code. Here's how to get started. When you call Desert Financial and ask about enrolling in MemberPass, we'll walk you through how to download the free MemberPass mobile app onto your personal smartphone. It only takes about a minute. Next, we'll help you securely connect your MemberPass profile to your Desert Financial member account. And finally, your secure digital ID will be stored on your phone. So the next time you call us, you can verify your identity in seconds using the MemberPass mobile app. In short, MemberPass is a quick and hassle-free way to prove your identity when calling Desert Financial while protecting your personal information. It's just one more way that Desert Financial is offering our members more convenience. All right, so that's just one example of 
how credit unions are um, promoting member yeah, pass among their members. We understand that when life is busy, every minute counts. Member pass is a quick and safe way to identify yourself. There we go. Sorry about that. So in terms of how does member pass work, um, this is these are very easy, simple steps that the consumer itself goes through. Of course, they first download the member pass wallet from the Google Play and Apple stores, and they secure that using the biometrics that are associated with their smartphone, either face ID or touch ID. And then they also establish a passcode, just in case biometrics fail. And it, it, you all know that when you have a ma mask on this, that's kind of um, demonstrated the use of the back of the backup pa passcode, because when you have a mask on, the face ID um, doesn't necessarily work especially on my phone. <laughs> um, then, you know, you establish a secure encrypted connection between the credit union and the member. This happens one time, it exists for as long as those credentials are active. And then the member pass credentials are, are shared and they're stored inside the, the member pass uh, wallet on the consumer member phone. So each time that the member interacts with the credit union, they, the, mem the, excuse me, the credit union initiates a verification request. And this is in the form of the member pass app notification. They click on that notification and they are greeted with a verification question. Are you on the phone with so-and-so at the credit union? And the responses are simple. Yes, I am or no, I'm not. The credit union has the capability of customizing um, and putting their own branding in this portion. They can customize the questions. Of course, they can customize their, their credit union name and logo on the screen, and they can actually customize the responses themselves. So in 15 seconds or less, it's pretty easy for them to verify not only the authenticity of the members, but also detect any type of fraudulent transaction, potential fraudulent transaction at the same time. I have another quick video that uh, walks, um, walks, walks you through that verification process. Um, and so on the right-hand side, you see what the member service representative or the teller screen would look like um, when they're interacting with the member. And the left-hand side is the member's phone itself. So I'm gonna run this real quick. Let's look at the branch authentication process. The credit union teller will initiate a verification request to the member by selecting Authenticate Using Member Pass from the teller screen. The member will receive a push notification from the app stating that their credit union is asking a security question to verify his identity. By securely opening the Member Pass app, the member confirms his identity by responding yes to the verification request question. If the person at the branch is not who they claim to be, the verification request will be sent to the actual member's phone. By responding no to the question, a notification will be sent to the teller indicating a possible fraudulent attempt being made to access that member's account. Member Pass makes it quicker and easier than ever before to authenticate at the branch, identify fraud attempts, and protect member privacy. Member Pass, revolutionizing hello in banking. All right, so that's how quick and easy it is um, for the, the, um, the, not only the credit union staff, but also the members themselves to verify themselves. We say that we're revolutioning hello and banking um, because this is the new way of identifying uh, consumers inside the credit union space. And actually credit unions are getting very creative in how they can position member pass as a value added service as well. So I mentioned earlier about some of the fraud activities. So in the inside the branch credit unions, some credit unions are putting in a special um, member pass link um, inside their branches for expedited transactions. So think of it much like a Disney fast pass experience where you have these fast pass to get in the front of the line. Um, that's a similar type of experience that they're, they're wanting to have with member pass inside the branch. Uh, I also mentioned in the drive up lane where the furthest driver drive through lane is being used sometimes to commit fraud. That lane is now the fast um, the member pass lane. Um, so it's a member pass only lane that uh, members can use um, to conduct their transactions um, in the drive up. 
So we recently did some um, um, survey uh, research among consumers um, just to further validate our initial um, uh, uh, research that we did um, in 2017. And it's ex exciting to see that from a na nationwide perspective, the need for member pass is very, very strong. Um, among 70% of respondents agree that member pass addresses a security concern that they have when identifying themselves. Um, I'm not gonna read through all of these, but I wanna point out a couple of them. Um, as it relates to um, how they change their way of interacting with their financial institution this year, well, half of res respondents reported that they did have to make that change. And a further that, those that identified um, that they did make a change in how they interact with their financial institution, there is a very strong connection with desirability for member pass. Um, also, as you would ex expect, um, and there was a third that experienced um, identity theft um, or debit or credit card fraud in um, the last six months. Um, two thirds in the last two year, or last year uh, experienced either one or the other or both. And uh, of those that responded with that type of experience said that they would sign up for member pass today. There was an immediate need among that group for member pass um, as a way to take back that control of uh, digital privacy and security back, back where it belongs. From um, a traction, so, um, you know, we, Sue Ledger has been um, offering member pass SSI uh, identity through Hyperledger Indy uh, for quite some time, one of the early adopters in this space. And uh, I mentioned that we have 70 credit unions that are investors. We are a credit union owned service organization. And we were designated as a QSO. Um, inside the industry, and that's what that means. It's owned by one or more credit unions um, itself, so it's not outside investments of the industry. We have 12 credit unions um, um, that are in active deployments or have implementation schedules. So we have two that have multiple use cases that are being deployed right now, and um, um, members are being enrolled into member pass. We had uh, four credit unions that deploy member pass in a single channel um, last month in October. We have three more credit unions that are deploying in first quarter next year. Plus we have another credit union service organization um, that does a lot of after hour or overload call center uh, support. And um, that QSO, very large QSO, credit union service organization and worked with like 8,000 credit unions. And, and we are uh, announcing an integration with that organization early next year. And um, also in Q2 next year, we have three more deployments so far that's planned, including the fifth, fifth largest credit union in the US that has well over a million members um, in their membership. So very excited about that, excited for the traction. Um, there's, a, there's a whole lot of activity going on with member pass right now. Um, as more and more credit unions are experiencing higher fraud and a lot of member frustration over the friction in their um, user experiences. Um, so far, we have approximately 10,000 member pass credentials issued to consumers, um, and that number continues to grow every single day. And so we're still early. Uh, so our first real active deployment in July, but we, we can see the, the amount of traction that has has taken place since we became commercially available um, in early March. So just to summarize um, some of the benefits that we promote to credit unions in, in terms of the timing, the timing for this can't be any better right now. And as credit unions start to look at their projects and prioritizing them for next year, um, you know, oftentimes they prioritize their, their projects based on whether or not it's, it's a compliance requirement, if it relates to security, if it relates to the member experience. Well, member pass affects all three of those, and it can provide a lot of agility into uh, their projects in the future because 
the authentication capability is already taken care of uh, for the member or for the credit union and the member. Uh, so it will be much easier for them to add more projects, add more services for the members in the future. So from a member experience, what they get is they provide the simplest, seamless uh, authentication experience across all channels. You know, and we emphasize that um, heavily. It's not a, a single, it's not a call center thing. Um, oftentimes they'll put band-aids on, um, you know, security and privacy related to one channel that adds more cost to that channel. Um, and that all can be eliminated by the use of member pass. It protects the members against identity theft, addresses their fears for a personal health and safety today. Um, and, you know, of course, the benefits, the main benefit of SSI is the ability to control, um, to own and control their personal information. For credit unions, why should they implement? Because it creates this omni-channel experience. It reduces fraud. It's safer for their employees and their members because it's contactless. Um, it reduces time and money in the member experience or in the authentication process. And most importantly, it builds trust with their members. So credit unions have always had a uh, historical um, trusted relationship with the consumers that they interact with. They're very personal organizations. A lot of high, high touch, high interaction, a lot of face-to-face -face interaction. Um, they are created with an association base, whether that is a, 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 an employee base or a community or an association. And so they're, they're, they've always experienced a high level of satisfaction and trust among consumers. Now that, they, um, now that consumers have shifted their interactions uh, to some extent into digital channels, that creates a different type of relationship. It's a digitally trusted relationship because now you're not interacting as much face-to-face -face as you once did before. And so member paths, offers that opportunity to bridge that gap and provide an opportunity to create a higher level of digital trust for the members. Thank you so much for your time and attention today for this webinar. Um, I appreciate um, your being on here and hearing more about member pass and what we do for credit unions. And Marta, I think at this time, I'm ready to answer any questions there might be out there. Wonderful, thank you. Um, well, so uh, I'm, I haven't seen any questions in the Q&A yet, uh, but I would encourage uh, everyone on this call to either raise your hand or, uh, or type it into the chat. We would love to talk with you. Um, I have a question of, of my own. Um, I was, could you talk a bit about why did you choose Indy uh, and not say Fabric that has a much more established uh, or you know mature code base, some say. Um, and what was your experience working with, with the community? Uh, I know that you see your ledger is uh, a, so uh, a steward of Sovereign as well. Mm -hmm. So could you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so the reason why we chose the path of Indy was through the partnerships that we established early on in this journey of ours. So we were one of the first to deploy using Evernim and um, the Sovereign Foundation, which of course has a very strong connection to Hyperledger Indy um, in that regard. And so that seemed like a no brainer for us. Um, and being a, 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 a steward on the Sovereign Network was another no-brainer that we felt was important. Um, having that representation of credit unions at the table of the Sovereign Foundation was, was huge. Credit unions have a voice um, in that ecosystem now. And so that was one of the reasons why it was important. And just because of where we are in our um, in our development and creating our peer-to-peer -peer network and our beginning of, um, of focusing on decentralized identities is why we chose um, Hyperledger Indy to start with. Um, as we expand into trusted data um, value exchange, um, we'll be able to interact with other Hyperledger projects in the future and other platforms as well. Thank you. Uh, I should let me um, allow you to talk. Uh, 
I think we can hear you. We should be able to hear you now. You just have to unmute yourself. Hmm. Let's see. Um, while while this is uh, while Vikesh is figuring out his uh, Zoom. Um, Another question uh, that I had for you is um, how much the performance was uh, of importance to you? So, you know, people are talking constantly about TPS and uh, if it's enough TPS, because you seem to have a massive system with a lot of participants in it, but it doesn't seem like it's such a big deal, you know, if it's a thousand TPS or uh, 10,000 or something. Um, it may not be a big deal today as we start uh, deploying credentials into the credit union industry, um, but it will be a big deal um, in the not too distant future. And in fact, that's kind of where our focus is right now is high availability and, and making sure that um, we have not only from a, um, a network standpoint, infrastructure standpoint, but also from a support standpoint uh, of making sure that we have um, everything established so that we can support a very large volume. We antici we're anticipating um, that the adoption, especially with some of the credit unions that we're deploying going into 2021, um, it will be a requirement uh, for those credit unions. And uh, we wanna make sure that we're, we have the right pieces in place to support that. Right. Um, cool. Um, Vikash, uh, are you able to uh, unmute yourself? You can type the question in the Q&A as well, if you prefer that. Um, any other questions from the audience? Okay. Um, great. Um, well, uh, I am afraid that in that case, uh, Vikash, you'll have to uh, email Julie uh, with your question. Uh, and uh, given that I don't have any more questions, I would like to thank you for an amazing presentation uh, and for taking the time to tell us about the CU Ledger and Member Pass. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Um, my email address is here. Also, you can reach me at jesser at memberpass.com as well. I'd uh, love to hear from you. Happy to answer any questions that you might have in support of the overall FSI community. So thank you very much. Thank you, Marta, for having me. Thank you. Bye.